I'm so excited to be here, Lucy, working on this amazing project, this exhibition, The Reflected Eye, that uh, puts together more than 100 years of history in fashion and, and photography. It's my pleasure to be with you. You have such a long um, experience working with these uh, magazines. You have been editor-in-chief for Harper's Bazaar, Marie Claire, Elle, so many magazines that you have been working and also you have written four books about fashion. Uh, tell me about this exhibition. Of course, this is an amazing exhibition. It's actually, um, it comes with this um, talent from Condé Nast and Hearst, which are the, the most amazing editorial houses in the world. So we are going to see the work of these photographers that had been working for more than 100 years. Also, it's amazing the titles that they have, you know, that you have Cosmo, you have Harper's, you have Elle, you have Marie Claire, you have so many titles in one house. And then you have Beau, you have GQ, you have Vanity Fair. It's, it's, it's going to be a thrill to see all these images together. It's amazing. We're going to have photographers from the early uh, 30s up to now. So we have in this exhibition photographers like Erwin Blumenfeld that he, he made such a beautiful photography and also like we have iconic images and covers from him. Like we have the uh, 1950 Vogue cover from Erwin Blumenfeld and through the history we have other amazing photographers like uh, Melvin Sokolsky, mm -hmm. uh, Alexei Lubomirsky and it's, uh, it's such a pleasure for me to talk about my two of my passions, which is photography and fashion. Absolutely, mine as well. So how did this um, exhibition come about? Tell us what happened, how, how did it come about? So this exhibition was created by Patty Cicular from New York together with the Port Washington Public Library and Vanessa Nastro together with Patty Cicular. They have been working on this exhibition for months or I don't know for a very very long time to be able to put together uh, all these photographs from all these different photographers through all the history and not just creating it's about also getting in touch with them getting the the licenses for for the images so it's a great work that they have been doing and they have the eye to do it and to me it's a it's a honor that we are together uh, with her and Vanessa working on this amazing project. Yeah, absolutely. And you can tell they have not only the eye, but also the relationships. And it's not an easy work, you know, to get all these photographers together um, at the same time and have all these amazing, amazing history, you know, put together. Fashion definitely gives us the opportunity to, to, change, uh, to change the history even. And, uh, with the pass of the time, we have seen changes in our, in, our, in our culture, changes in society, changes in the way we dress, in the way we act. And there are some, like, I believe every, every decade has a specific big change that has created. And in terms of the creativity, in terms of uh, technology, there have been like big times of revolution in the 60s coming from black and white film, going to color film, in the 2000s coming from film, getting into digital mm -hmm, photography. Mm -hmm. There have been big changes and also challenges. Um, tell me, we were talking about how has technology, technology changed the way we work in, in fashion, in the magazines, in photography. Tell me your personal opinion. What, do, do you miss those times, I don't know, like, in the 90s, 2000s, before the digital era really was on it. Do you, do you miss something? Do you, have, do you prefer one more than the other? Or how is for you? Well, I mean, I think uh, every, every you know, moment has its meaning. And I believe that now it's, it's more practical. It, it, we can move around. Uh, now we can do post-production, which is important for some things. We don't have to carry the bubble around <laughs> no? the cities. We don't have to be very concerned about the x-rays with the film because you, when you travel, you had to put your luggage into the x-rays and some, some of those films were erased. And you, you had that thing, you know, oh, you, you forgot where the roll was and it was the whole thing that you had to be taken care of. But 
I believe now, um, I, I believe now that people have been a little more, maybe too comfortable with some of the things. So I think we should just take the responsibility to do our job, be in the picture, be a team, you know, more so than looking, you know, nostalgic about the film. Because I, I believe the film is really nice. And when you see those pictures, you might not know the difference, but there's a difference between film and digital. Yeah, technology through all the years has changed a lot. And to me, what is most important is the creativity. And on this exhibition, we have the opportunity to see the work of such a different photographer through all these years, but also from different countries, which is a different eye. Um, we have photographers from China, Lebanon, um, Mexico, uh, from all the parts of, of the world. And um, it's, um, it's really interesting to see also what has been similar many decades ago mm -hmm. than now, because fashion or photography, it's, there, there are cycles too. Yes. We come back to trends, we transform them, and it's really interesting to see how fashion and photography has changed, but at the same time, how they also have their root from other times, and we can see that. Yes, I mean, there's influence, of course, and there's also that they have to respect the, the DNA of, of the magazine, you know? It's not like you work for me and, and you can do whatever. You have to be really, you know, take into consideration what the magazine is about. And, and sometimes we will, as a magazine, decide the model, the concept. We are, you, you just have to kind of uh, do the, your thing, but you have to become part of the team. And you somehow are the most important part of that team. However, sometimes you don't have to say, you know, the say of, of, of okay, let's do this, uh, you know, out of this world, or let's do this, the 50s story, or whatever. So it is, um, you know, cause somehow it's a compromise between all of us. And it's amazing to see that you can point out, oh, no, that was Vogue, and that was Harper's, and that was Cosmo, and that, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, it is interesting for to see in the magazines on the pages the, the difference, the result. And also to me it's really interesting uh, that we have now the opportunity to see and to ask to some of the photographers what have been their experience working with both uh, editorials because there are magazines that many of the photographers we have worked in both and to change from one to another but also to keep the DNA, as you said, it's really, it's really a challenge. Even like keeping working on the same magazine and working with a new uh, editor in chief on of years course. later, it, it's a change oh, because yeah. uh, technology changes, but also the perception and also the trends on, on, on the magazines. Um, it's like on, on the beginning of the 90s, models were someone that would show the clothes in a very nice way, and suddenly models started becoming. Uh, celebrities. In, in the 60s, models like Twiggy w was a, ce a celebrity. And then, in, with the pass of the time, also there were changes that models were not anymore the ones on the cover and started, uh, magazines started having Hollywood actresses for, for the covers. So, for you, how, you that you have been working all these different magazines through all these years, how do you change when you work in one magazine and you start working for another one? How do you get into that DNA yourself? Do you follow the line of the editor-in-chief that was there before? Or do you try to change totally with your personality? How, how do you manage that? that? That's an interesting question. You come from one magazine to other magazine, some, sometimes directly. You don't even have you know, holidays or vacations, you know, in between. So you are really, your mind is set in that magazine and it's somehow hard to become another person because you do have to transform yourself. Even though as a editor-in-chief, you come with your, your own personality and you have to print that as well, you know. People have to see that there's a new editor-in-chief and 
And the editor-in-chief has a whole cycle, cycle, you know, between when she started, when she finished, you can tell when was Mirabella there or when was uh, Vreeland there or where was uh, Anna Winter there. You have to see that. I mean, it's part of your job. And if you're not doing that, you're not doing a good job. However, you have to respect the DNA of your new magazine. So there's a couple of months that there's a transition, and you will see that. You know, the first couple of months of the new editor-in-chief, you can tell she's not yet home, but she will become. And then you get, you know, the voice, the attitude, the philosophy, uh, and then you become the new editor-in-chief. It takes a while but it, it comes through. And normally, do you work with the same, not the same, but some of them, the photographers that you work in previous magazines, or how do you change to create the new, the new DNA? Uh, I'm asking you this because as a photographer, to me, might not be that big of the change. I mean, you need to create a whole new DNA, getting part of the old DNA into a new one because you're planning for the whole year, you're planning month by month. Mm -hmm. As a photographer, we do fashion stories, which is some, it gives us the opportunity to be different from one story to another one. So from changing from Harper's Bazaar to Cosmopolitan, magazines that have a very different DNA, it's more about the story in that moment. You pick the model that has the Cosmo attitude or the Harper's Bazaar attitude, and then together with the styling, you bring together the story. And to me, or photographers that we work in different magazines, I believe we have uh, that option to move easier. Easier, uh, we have the option to move easier between the different magazines because to us it's just planning a new session, a new story. But working as an editor in chief, it's it's more complicated than that because it's not just about the creativity. It's not about the story. It's also about uh, the part of the business of the magazine because it's um, it's a whole ecosystem that goes together. Absolutely. You could ha get a, um, an idea of working with models for the cover, but maybe for that month, the magazine wants to have some celebrity because was doing something relevant in, in a movie, in music, in different areas. And then you have to follow that trend or to follow that line that the the magazine requires. How, how do you work on, on that? Magazines have, have to really work for um, the commercial business as well. Magazines have to really play a, a really big part with, uh, with the clients and the brands. And there are so many egos and so many interest, uh, interests. That, that it's not easy, believe me. And it's not easy when you have a celebrity to work with. I mean, celebrities have been around in magazines somehow as a portrait. You know, you can see some of these uh, images that you can see in this uh, exhibition. Um, you'll see portraits of really great people. Uh, however, as a cover, you have to really work with that celebrity like if she was a model. And uh, that's not easy to do. That's also a big challenge. And I think that's a challenge uh, from different teams, let's say. It's the team of the celebrity with all the person that come with, with her or with him and the team of the magazine, the photographer, because to be able to, to bring a new idea of a new look of the celebrity or just the concept of that month on the, on the magazine, it must be really a, a challenge. It is. I mean, to start with, they usually choose their own photographer and they use their, what is called the glam team, which is the, the stylist, the makeup artist, the hair person. So, I mean, you're really, as an editor or as a photographer, we're, we're like meeting in, in like two different teams, you know? And sometimes that team is really more working for the celebrity than for you. And that, it's very challenging. And it's sometimes when really everything works out, you can tell that that really has the DNA of the, of the magazine, that really flows into the magazine, you know, but it's not, also, not always easy. 
you really have to respect the personality of the celebrity as well. And she has a word, you know, she, she, she has to choose. Oh no, I don't like this, yes, I do like this. No, I don't work for this brand. I can only work for this and this brand. It's, it's not easy, you know? And when it is a story with models, um, do you, how, how do you work, what do you prefer to do, to be more involved in the whole process? Or do you work in the beginning to create that team that you trust and then you let them the freedom to create and then you just supervise? How is it for you? Well, it's uh, like being a director of an orchestra, you know, you, you cannot, I mean, you might be the violin, but you are not the whole music or the, the whole orchestra. You have to be aware that you are part of it. And, and I have to have a flow in the magazine. And not only a flow, it has to be coherent and it has to have sense, no? So what happens is you put bit by bit, some of the things have been done earlier, you know, some you've been working maybe for an article or for a really amazing feature for a couple of months. And when I hire you to, to do a story, I hire you for a specific story. So that I'm taking into your consideration your style, but I have to be sure you can be also my style, you know, not only you as a, as a photographer, you have to transform your, your style into Harper's Bazaar or Glamour or whatever I'm working on. And, and also, I have to make you part of what I'm going to do because you have to kind of like and, and really be joyful to work in, I don't know, um, a story about the 50s or, or about Mexico, whatever. So we have to be really talking about it. We have to work in a mood board. We have to develop the whole concept. Um, if everything goes well for you, because you might come the, the latest on the team, you know, you might be the last one to be called and, and it's you, maybe you've been, you know, taking a part of this because there was another photographer and before, however, you are coming to do a thing for me that has to make sense in the whole magazine. And, and that takes a while to be able to handle, you know? It does, and it's a challenge. As a photographer, we are, we are artists and we want freedom. So uh -huh. mm -hmm. these magazines give us the opportunity, the platform to express our creativity through photography. And uh, it's, a, it's a challenge, not what, just what we were talking about, the challenge not just in creating something in the line or the DNA of the magazine, but also the challenge to work together, developing, uh, creating together as a team, and also to have our freedom into a line or into, into a concept. And I believe this is a quality. This is um, a gift that the best photographers or iconic photographers, they have had uh, achieved to be able to communicate with the editor-in-chief or the whole team to be able to create something together, but at the same time to put their personality because that's what makes the difference. If everybody would just follow the line of someone, then it wouldn't have such a strong personality. Of and, course. and photographers uh, do, make a, do make a change. Photographers, uh, the editors-in-chief, fashion editors, and the um, uh, graphic designers, everybody puts a part on, on the process of the, of the magazine. There are directors like Alexander Lieberman. He was someone that really changed the way of the aesthetics in the magazines. Yes, definitely. And, uh, and editors-in-chief like Diana Freeland did such a huge change in the way that magazines were on, on those times on the 50s, 60s. So, and together with the photographers, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's great to have in the, same, in, um, in the same team, big photographers, big fashion stylists, big editors in chiefs. So, but the challenge is to, to be able to, to have harmony and to create something different that goes into the line and the DNA, that then that becomes the new DNA because it's also about changing it to the new one that is coming, that is coming in the new uh, year or the new decade or the new change of technology. 
I'm very happy to be working with you on this amazing too, project, The Reflected Eye, a project that has been created and created by Patti Sicular and Vanessa and Astro, together with the Port Washington Public Library. Mm -hmm. It's a really an amazing effort and work that we have been working on this project for about, I don't know, months, and they, they have been working for a very oh, long time. For, I'm sure, for uh, years, I'm sure. And I really am very proud of you guys.